Hi, my name is Tony Messina, and by putting my ideas and inventions on the internet, I'm documenting that these ideas and inventions originated with me. Okay, what you're looking at here is the joist hoist rig. This is the most advanced version of the joist hoist rig that I've built to date. Uh, this particular unit features a new winch. This new winch is one that has a handbrake. When the handle's being cranked, whether you're going up or down, the uh, handle will stand by itself. If you let go of it, the handle won't free spin. So under a load, your handle is safe with this between with, with at least a 50 pound weight on it. Uh, you can let go of the handle and it won't uh, free spin on you. And you don't have to toggle any switch to go from forward to reverse. Uh, when you're going up or down, the hand crank works independent of any kind of a switch. It just literally goes up or down, and when you let go of it with a load on it, it won't free spin. So it's a very fine winch for doing what we do, lifting equipment uh, into attics. Um, this particular winch here has been modified. This is the premium version. I'm going to show you why it's the premium version. Uh, one thing is, is I put a hitch pin in where the hinge is so you can take this apart you can carry the two these two components separate and carrying these separately makes it a little easier to put this joist hoist up I'll show you on the demo unit in just a minute when I put this up to use it uh, what I'm talking about but uh, having this hitch pin be able to take it out makes it a lot more convenient take your pin out you have your two parts it's easier to it's easier now to put this up into the rafters and then come along with your winch and put it on okay this winch has been modified with two features that make it a premium uh, winch that I, I also have the economy version without it the economy version you won't be able to take this apart and the economy version also doesn't have this skid plate in here. I manufacture a skid plate with a hinge, a plate, piece of plate steel, uh, and a spring. It's spring loaded. This skid plate rides on your cable spool, keeping your cable from bird nesting. Without a skid plate, your uh, cable here tends to loosen up and uh, come unwound and uh, to prevent that this, this skid plate is put in here okay so these two features the hitch pin and the skid plate are what make this particular model a premium model uh, I do an economy version where I don't have a skid plate and the hinge is permanent you don't have a removable pin uh, for a less expensive version of, of uh, joist hoist uh, for people who want these advanced features, uh, you can pay just a little more to get them. It'll be on the price list. This is a very fine winch right here. This is a very nice rig. The skid plate in here, you can't really see it on the camera, but the skid plate's in there, and it rides on that cable. Also, while we have it up close here in the camera, you can see that I've got this... Uh, hand grip for when it's being used you can hold the other side of the unit and I've got this thread, uh, cable gu guide that keeps the cable pointed straight to the center of the spool as you're pulling something up opposed by the hinge that makes it point towards the load wherever the load is the cable is going to come out and it's going to point this winch towards the load no matter how it pivots how much it pivots that's the key feature about this uh, whole rig, this whole joist hoist, uh, the way it's put together. Uh, that's what makes it really nice is uh, it, it uh, points towards the load as you're cranking up. You shouldn't have any problems bringing things up into the attic or dropping things back out. All right, to demonstrate the lift rigging that I'm going to show you, I had to build a mock-up of the attic. I've got this stand here that's portable. I can wheel this around. and. It's simple, it's just you open it up and you've got a piece of the attic with a pull down hole. Ok, 
okay, this this area right here is the size of a pull-down door in adding. And if the pull-down door is attached at this end and the stairs go that way, this section of the pull-down door can be used to bring up various items. Uh, various items that I'm going to show you right now with some of the lift rigging that I manufacture. Okay, we're going to mount the joist hoist up here on these joists, right up here. But first, I'm going to remove the hitch pin and take the winch away from the rig. Having one of the claws loosened so you can move it to fit it up, take the electric winch. We can simply put it up here. Slide our pitch pin, put the clip in, ready to go. So we take it out, pop it loose, hold it up, and you're down. Put your winch up. Hit the through. Clip on, you're ready to go. Here's some close-ups of the joist hoist rig. You can see it mounted.
see I can let go of the handle and it doesn't free spin. Okay, now here's a perfect example of what you can do with the extension pulley. And the distance that we've got here, this is about 18 to 24 inches. I pulled this piece of equipment up to the extension beam and I've gotten it this close. And this is used to take advantage of very small tight openings in attics where if the winch was hanging here, you'd have to be giving up about a foot of your distance to get the uh, piece of equipment up. Okay, so what we do is we use an extension pulley. on two by fours, the weight limit is going to be 180 pounds. If you're hanging this rig on two by six or bigger, you're going to be, the weight limit is going to be 200 pounds. That's the maximum, okay? The joist hoist claw. The joist hoist claw is what you attach to either a 2x4 joist or a 2x6 or larger joist. And I'm going to show you in detail how you anchor this claw and why it's called a claw. I'm going to show you how you anchor it to a joist, a 2x4 or a 2x6 beam. Okay, I want you to get a full appreciation for the screws that go into this uh, claw. This is called a claw because if you'll notice, all these sheetrock screws, I've got holes in the claw here for you to put screws in to the stud that you're anchoring to. That's why this piece is called a claw. If you see these screws, four holes on this side, four holes on this side, on your flat surface here of the board, the flat end, you got a screw and you got another one down here. In total, you've got 10 sheetrock screws can be put in to hold this claw to the stud that you're anchoring to. Okay? Okay, in the claw, we have 10 holes that you can use for putting sheetrock screws in to further grip this claw to the stud that you're anchoring to. If you'll notice these thumb screws here back out and you've got two thumb screws on each claw. It's a well thought out tool. What I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how you attach this to a stud in the attic. Okay. What you're going to do first is, is you're going to leave your thumb screw loose here. You're going to leave this loose because you want to, once you get this on a board, you're going to want to center it with the other one, you're going to want to center them up and get them on the board. Once they are in position, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tighten one side or the other. The first thing you want to do once you get it in place. So let's tighten this side because see, we're getting a flush on one side perfect and the other side we've got a little opening. What you're going to do is, is you're going to flush one side and you're going to take sheetrock screws to the other side and you're going to sink them in. Then you're going to put two screws in the bottom of the jig.
and you'll put two screws, four screws on the other side. You want to cleat this thing down with the heavier loads. The heavier your load, the more you got to be concerned. So what I've done is I've built, got this built-in feature where you can actually cl claw this to the beam that you're using. Okay. Now we can safely say that this beam is attached to this claw. That's not going anywhere. Let's tighten our other thumb screw now. Set it. Tighten your thumb screws, and here's where you use your box wrench. You can get it in here and you can tighten these thumb screws very tight. So now, it would be safe to say that this board and this claw is absolutely anchored together. That's not going anywhere. That's not coming apart. That's anchored together. You can see the screws going through that are anchoring to it. Okay, finally, ultimately, if it would suit you, you can drill a hole and put a rod in instead of having these thumb screws. You can take these thumb screws out. Okay, take your thumb screws out, leaving your uh, sheetrock screws cleat it in so the object is there when it's in the attic and you're going to get up there and you're going to drill this hole out. Drill it straight through to the other side. That's what we're going to do. Okay? Okay. You can put a bolt through. See? So, no matter how you look at it, this is one fine tool to have in your arsenal of equipment when it comes to doing things like lifting or dropping equipment or materials down from an attic. Okay, there you have it. You can put a bolt in there. You can put your nut, nut and washer on there. And then the claw is ab absolutely anchored to the board, whether it be a 2x4 or 2x6 or larger. Sometimes when you go to put your rig up, you're going to find that one of the joists that you want to use is actually bent a little. It's warped a little. And the joist hoist won't fork on straight. So what you have to do is simply take a wrench, put on the board, and push or pull, depending on which way you need that board to go a little bit, as you go pushing the unit up. Either pull or push, use the wrench in either direction, but you can make, you can influence the direction that this board slants to get the piece of equipment. I weigh 150 pounds, and this is a demo stand, and it'll hold me 